Um, some of you may know me as one of the co-directors of Forest Fringe, which is a UK-based organization. But today I'm here with a Canadian hat on, uh, which suits my accent a lot better. So I wanted to talk to you today about a creation, an intensive creation lab that I've been running along with Volcano in Toronto for the last, I don't know, six years, I suppose. We run it in collaboration, usually with an academic institution, but the last couple of years has just been with the theater center. And it's called Informing Content. And it was really interesting hearing what you guys had to say about games, because we've never really used the word game to refer to what we do, but actually it does operate according to a lot of the same principles that are in games. So it's a three-day creation lab uh, in which we invite a series of speakers, usually academics, but sometimes just sort of experts or interesting people, to deliver a range of talks about a particular subject. Usually a 20-minute talk, something akin, I suppose, to a TED talk, maybe. Uh, in past years, we've done it with the Center of Ethics at the University of Toronto and with the Jackman Humanities Institute. So to give you an example, this was a talk that was given um, about sustainability and about the environment. Uh, this woman has been doing all of her research on sustainability and the environment. And attending the talks, and there are about six talks at the beginning of the lab. Whoop. This is a little bit awkward. Attending the talks would be a series of artists, OK? Um, artists and students, and they would take notes during the talk. Um, now, there would be six different talks, and then six different unusual spaces that are usually the same spaces where those same academics or experts actually work, like their offices, for example. And then we give the students and the artists a series of rules over the course of the weekend. One rule is that they each get assigned one of the talks. So somebody might be assigned to talk about food sustainability. Somebody might be assigned to talk about religious ritual. I mean, there, there's a huge range, but usually they do kind of go around one particular subject. And then they would be assigned one of the spaces, and they would be assigned what we call sort of a generative constraint, which would be something like make a piece with one audience member at a time or make a piece in which everyone dances. Or another uh, form we have is uh, play yourself, risk something, and fool us. So they use these things as a kind of jumping off point for the piece that they make. And there is one artist uh, who is considered a team leader. We sort of split people up into teams. And then that team leader has the veto, I suppose, on what the group is going to make collaboratively over the, s the course of a weekend in that space, reflecting upon that lecture and that form that they've been assigned. And then really they just have two days to make in that space, and then we have a public showing. Um, and what I really encourage people to do in it is to take risks, to take risks with their practice, to do something that they haven't done before, to take risks if they're students who have just graduated and perhaps they always thought that they were just going to be an actor who would be in Chekhov to really consider what it means to make something a lot more experimental. It's called informing content because my kind of mission in Canadian theater is to get people to not think of, to not take form for granted in the theatrical realm, to not think like if I'm making a piece of theater it means that it's a play with characters who are fictional and it looks like this and then it Maybe, you know, maybe there's a conversation about whatever political topic. What I'm interested in is having Canadian theater makers think about form as being directly linked to content. And I suppose the nice part about this is that because we have these experts who give us these talks at the beginning of the weekend, there is content. <laughs> there's really interesting content that maybe they never would have explored before. So I just wanted to show you some pictures from past informing contents. These are just of some pieces that have been made at the end with the public showings. Okay, that's people listening to the lecture. Okay, so here you can see like, this was a piece about the way that people label each other. No, it's not working. Go on the website. <laughs> You've got it right there. It's informing content. Volcano, if you're interested in learning more about it. Uh, we're really interested in starting to work actually, because we've always worked mostly with humanities experts, um, 
but I think that we're really interested in seeing what it would mean to work with a law school, for example, or to work with a biology school or a scientific organization. It's always been about trying to create some sort of dialogue between academic research and artistic practice. Thank you. <laughs>